like you, you have the same car mm -hmm. with front end damage, right? My car is double. Oh, did you have insurance? Did I have insurance at the time? No, I didn't. No insurance. Did you have a license? It was expired. No. You know, those are the kind of things that make people flee the scene of a rear end collision. Megan Hennessy is suing Shantae Maxwell for $3,326 for car damages and pain and suffering resulting from a hit and run car accident. With her in court is her husband and witness, Michael Hennessy. Shantae denies hitting Megan's car and says her car was damaged in a previous accident. She says this is just a case of mistaken identity. All rise. This court is now in session. Honorable Judge Alex Ferrer presiding. Thank you. Please be seated. Ms. Hennessy, you're yes. suing Ms. Maxwell because you say you were involved in a hit and run collision where she rear-ended your, rear your vehicle and then fled the scene and refused to pay for your damages. Is that right? That's true, Your Honor. Okay. And Ms. Maxwell, you say she's absolutely incorrect. You had no collision with her and it's just mistaken identity. That's true, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Ms. Hennessy, tell me what happened here. So on the morning of August 26th of 09, I was driving to school around 8 in the morning. I was getting on the freeway at a metered stop. And I happened to look behind me as I was adjusting the mirror, and I saw Ms. Maxwell having quite a fit in the car, uh, flailing her arms. And that was the first time I noticed her was on the metered on-ramp. It was she, unusual. Was she alone in the car? No, there was a young man sitting with her. Okay, so she was having a heated discussion, yeah. it looked like? Okay. At minimum, an argument. I'm not sure, but okay. something wild. What, what, where is this? What city? What state? This is um, Torrance, Gardena border in California, California. Mm -hmm. okay all right and you were where on, on what expressway I was getting on the 405 south freeway okay and so uh, she was behind you yes. what happened about half a mile later she re she rear ends me and so I thought hmm. how, how did the rear ending happen so there are only two lanes that get on the 110 freeway which is where I immediately transition when I get on the 405 I don't really stay on that freeway so I had to be in the second lane over she apparently also had to be there and just came up when traffic came to a, a halt she did not and just proceeded to hit me from behind okay like so what, what, what kind of car was she in it was a few years old mercedes-benz okay. well, you shot. drive a mercedes-benz Ms. Maxwell excuse me were you do, do you drive a mercedes -Benz? yes I, I did I did own a mercedes-benz yes you did okay what color pewter Pewter. Yes. That's right. Because Mercedes would not call it yeah, gold. Exactly. They call uh, it pewter. pewter. Silver, gold. Okay. Um, all right. So, so how big was the damage to your car? Uh, out of pocket, I, my deductible was 500, but the actual total was around 2,300. Do you, do you have any pictures of the damage? Paid. I do. Let me let me see what you have. So let me see what your what your. Uh... That's actually everything. So. The, the damage is actually worse than the exterior because it went up under my trunk. Let's put the pictures up so I can take a look. Okay, so this is the exterior without the bu with the bumper on it. Yes. Okay, next picture. So it's kind of hard to tell in here. There's some pictures looking down into the trunk where the trunk is actually crumpled up into itself. Inside. Yes. So one of your other pictures here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I can see inside where your trunk is crumpled up yes. around the yeah. tire. Okay, so this would mean that her car would have to have hood damage. Absolutely. In all, in all likelihood, because it scooped under. Yes. Right? Okay. Good so job. tell me what happens after the accident, because I normally would go to Miss Maxwell and find out what happened, but she's denying that it was her, so sure. it's, it's going to be kind of moot. I go like, why didn't you break? Okay, exactly. Very well. It wasn't me. So, so what happens after the accident? So uh, everyone saw it because traffic had stopped, so you can't exactly drive away at that moment. You've got to pretend like you're pulling over, apparently. So we pull over, and she never got out of the car. So that made me think, hmm, this is unusual. So her boyfriend or whoever the young man was came out and spoke with me, and you know, I asked if their baby was okay. You had a baby no, in the car? There was a baby. Okay. He was a toddler, and at no point did he ask if I was child. okay. I'm sorry? A young child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so what happened with your conversation? Do you, by the way, do you have a young child? Yes, I do have a son. You do? Yes. And a boyfriend? No. Did you have a boyfriend then? When she's, a, uh, when she's saying... No, I did not. <laughs> okay. So, so go ahead. What happens? 
So um, I said, you know, is the baby okay? Do you have insurance? He said, yes, we do. So I said, great, so do I. So I turned around mm -hmm. to get my insurance, and he was getting his insurance as well. I turn around, and they're pulling away like, see you later, ma'am. So uh, I got the license as they drove away, and I typed it into my BlackBerry. I was very upset. My hands were shaking, you know. I was like, how, how is this happening to me kind of situation? And so I typed the last three digits, 345 instead of 435, so they weren't able to find them. Okay, so you, you, you eventually call the police, and you say, I've just been a victim of a hit and run. Yes. And you call them, and you report it, and you give them the tag number that you entered into your BlackBerry. Yes. Or whatever, right? Okay. Yes. None of this has anything to do with you? No. No. Okay. So they, uh, they run the tag, and since you've given them the inverted numbers, you say, 345 instead of 435? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you give them 345 and they run it, and I'm assuming it comes to a compo completely different car, not a Mercedes. Yeah, true. Okay, so normally that's the end of it. Normally, but you're dealing with a redhead, Your Honor, and I don't give up, so I decided that Good to she know. lives nearby, I'll probably see her again. Coming up, this hit and run turns into a high speed chase. I switch lanes, they switch lanes. I speed up, they speed up. I don't even know who it was. Like, I'm like, okay, this is getting really weird now. So I'm exiting the freeway because my friend lives close. And I'm calling her at the same time. I'm like, I think there's somebody following me. And later, will Shantae's alibi help save her case? Now, here's the remarkable thing. She does have a rear-end collision with some guy at a Burger King parking lot. And he says it. It's I in the police report. It. Exactly. And they contacted the guy. And you know what the guy said? He said, yeah. I backed into her. Judge Alex is back with a case of Megan Hennessy, who's suing Shantae Maxwell for $3,326 for car damages and pain and suffering resulting from a hit and run accident. But Shantae denies hitting Megan's car and says this is a case of mistaken identity. All right, so, so what did you do? You've got the police so, telling you it doesn't come back to that car. So naturally, I took it upon myself to check every single gold, champagne-colored Mercedes of that make and model in my entire neighborhood every day I was driving around because I figured, what, do I, what else do I have to do, right? I'm, I'm in the look. What else so, do you have to do? Right. <laughs> yeah. You live, live a life. Yeah, that's life. true. That's oh. true. Fair You're not, talking about every champagne-colored yeah. Mercedes in there LA. There aren't that many. It's every, an odd color. There are As she lot. said, pewter. It's not well, like you know, a cherry you know, red. It's, it's the minute a lot you buy a car, you start seeing every car that looks like it. So, exactly. So what happened? Seriously. Four months later is when I saw the car again. Four months? Yes. You're looking for four months? Yeah. Every day on your way to work? Yeah. I figured she lives really close by, so Because you were both off. getting on the same place. Yeah, she got on directly behind me. And who gets on the freeway at what 8 What do you do for a living, ma'am? I'm in medical school. <laughs> I pay attention, Your Honor. You should be. <laughs> I look for things. Yeah. You should be a detective. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how did this, is this your husband? Yes. What did he think about your incessant search for the Holy Grail here? He was not pleased, Your Honor. No, come on up, sir. He tired of hearing. Uh, how, how, was, how was this for four months, day in and day out? Borderline obsessive. Not, I don't think it's borderline. There's so yeah. many Mercedes, I mean, though, like so many in California, like in, in Los Angeles. I just wanted her to be happy and move on and because I thought it was a lost cause. Okay. So how did it not become a lost cause? Uh, New Year's Eve. Hawkeye um, Hennessy was on the case. 2009. Okay. We're on the 405, pretty much right in the same area on the other side of the freeway, and she spots the car. We're in a different car. We're in my truck at that point. Okay. So uh, sh we, we see the car drive by. It's Miss Maxwell and her Mercedes. And what convinces you that it's her? The front end damage was still there as the she drove the away. The same front end damage that you yes, saw the day of the accident? indeed. And what about the tag? How close was her tag to I yours? Did. Everything was correct except for it was 435 at the end instead of 345 at the end. So weird, right? Miss Maxwell. They chased me down. Come on now. What? You picked the wrong person. They what chased happened? me down completely. I look in my mirrors and I notice a truck is following me and they have been following me for quite a while. So I'm driving and it is New Year's Eve and I'm driving, getting ready to go to my best friend's no, house. He's not trying to run you off the road or anything, right? Oh, let me tell you. No, no, I mean, when you see him, when you notice you know, him. When I first notice him, they're driving behind me. Just driving Just like driving. anybody behind she you. So I switch, lane, I, switch, I, I switch lanes, they switch lanes. 
I speed up, they speed up. I don't even know who it was. Like, I'm like, okay, this is getting really weird now. So I'm exiting the freeway because my friend lives close. And I'm calling her at the same time. I'm like, I think there's somebody following me. I pull out, I'm driving recklessly. I'm I know terrified. what following you means. You don't I am have to terrified break street of my street. life, seriously. Well, why didn't you go to the police station? I didn't, I, I didn't even, even think about that. I was, there was not even a police station near. My mind didn't even think of that. I was thinking of, let me get away from them because who are they? Coming up next, will Shantae stick to her story? It was really weird to me. That whole situation was weird, and I didn't know who it was for at least maybe... Well, did you start, at the time you see him drive by and you have a moment to think, do you think to yourself that maybe it's the people that you had rear-ended? Did you see who's in the car? I like looked and I seen I looked when I looked in my mirror, I seen him driving in her in the passenger seat. Okay. And I I'm every corner that I turned, they literally turned out in traffic with me like recklessly. Like my baby is in the car. You're not caring if you're if you're gonna make me crash or what anything. What are you thinking? You got a baby in the car, drive to but a at police. At the same station. time I didn't know who this was. Like I didn't know if you're trying to kill me. Who just goes around following somebody at that high? People speed. have been rear ended by them. I end up losing them. How'd you lose them? I just I pulled in my out friends. Front of I pulled I no, they Not still followed. I pulled I pulled in my friend's um parking saw. But she I wasn't got driving. out of the car. Okay, I got hold out on, the hold car. on. Okay. So you lose them. Yeah. Okay. I so, seen them drive down my friend's street though. Okay. So it was really weird to me. That whole situation was weird and I didn't know who it was for at least Maybe well, did you start, at the time me. you see him drive by and you have a moment to think, do you think to yourself that maybe it's the people that you had rear ended? I never rear ended anyone. I thought I'd get you with that. Okay. So anyway. So, All right, so that's tell why me, I never tell, talked tell about that. Not one time. That never occurred to okay. my mind. So tell me what happens. You obviously, you must call the police and say, I've got the right tag now. Yes. Okay. I, I so, immediately... you, so you call the police and you report, right? Yeah. Okay. How is it your car has the same front end damage as the Mercedes that hit her? Because I was on my lunch break with my friend and we were going in to um, Wells Fargo, to the bank. We were going in the bank and a guy was pulling out of, he was backing out of the Burger King parking lot. Apparently he didn't want to wait in the drive-thru. Okay. So he was backing out of the Burger, the Burger King park, um, the, um, the drive-thru. So as he was backing up, I was honking my horn like, stop, 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 stop. But he was going such a fast pace that he backed up into me. My friend is there and she's, you know, trying to come down. What damage down. did he cause to your car? He messed the whole front end up. The whole front end? Yes. He, well, he, it's like. Backing it, up? In from a drive through yeah, he, he, he backed up hard. He, was he, he backing up at like 30 miles an hour? He backed up hard, Your Honor. And he stuck around? Me. No, he, he, he stuck around and cussed me out. He hopped in his car and he drove off. And he fled? He fled. And you got his tag? <laughs> yes. And you did not call the police no, to I report? No, I just went back to work. Coming up, the evidence continues to stack up against Shantae. Coincidences continue. So you have the same looking car with consistent damage. You have a license plate that is identical with all the numbers just inverted. The last three are inverted. Actually, two of the last three are inverted. How many do you think there are in the entire state of California? You told me he totally jacked up your front end, your entire front end. Well, it's the way my, it's not jacked up. Are we, down, are we downplaying like, the damages now? No, I'm just telling you, the, the, it, I can tell you it's, it was a, a headlight and a little bit of the hood and um, the bumper part. Okay, which it wasn't remarkably like a bashed in, is like, consistent with your car going under hers and pushing the, the that's trunk. That's a big coincidence from what she There's a lot of coincidences in this case. Well. She gets rear-ended by a woman who looks down. like you driving a, not gold, a pewter Mercedes, right? And the car gets under hers, which means it's gonna have hood damage. You have the same car mm -hmm. with front end damage, mm -hmm. right? Okay, this is what, how many months Mercedes. later? My car is double. Well, did you have insurance? Did I have insurance at the time? No, I didn't. No insurance? Did you have a license? It was expired. Oh. You know, those are the kind of things that make people flee the scene of a rear end collision. No license, no well, insurance. I didn't. I never had this. Okay. this is, I never did, did this. Let's hold on, hold on, because the coincidences continue. So you have the same looking car with consistent damage. You have a license plate that is identical with all the numbers, just inverted. The last three are inverted. Actually, two of the last three are inverted. How many do you think there are in the entire state of California? 
with that but tag. That's what she's telling you. She that's what I'm telling you. you. Yeah, but she okay. can tell you what that's she what's wants. Documented so let's, get, let's, let's now get to the. I'm sorry. That's what's documented in the report on the okay. day of the accident and the supplemental. Well, no, it is. It is in the report. The police later. report has everything she said at the time of the accident. Okay, three, four, five, and it's four, three, five. Now here's the remarkable thing. She does have a rear-end collision with some guy at a Burger King parking lot. And he says it. It's in the police report. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they contacted the guy. And you know what the guy said? He said, yeah, I backed into her. I was backing out at a slow speed. And they showed him the pictures of your front-end damage. And he said, no way. And he no also, way. He also said that his wife or someone was in the car with him. And no one ever was in the car with him. Let me, let me tell you how this all boils down, OK? You fled the scene after rear-ending her car. You're responsible for the damages to her car, the rent, rental bills. She's got uh, the rental car bills. She's got medical bills here and physical therapy bills, which she's getting reimbursed for. She is suing for pain and suffering. She could have sued you for the maximum of pain and suffering and gotten more money against you because you fled the scene. And I'm not very sympathetic with people who flee the scene when somebody has been injured. I'm not sympathetic to people who flee the scene when nobody's been injured, but certainly not when they're injured, okay? Because that is a felony, all right? So the bottom line is you are going to reimburse her $3,410 every penny, and then you're going to go deal with the consequences for the criminal charges. Good luck to you, all right? All right. Judge Alex has ruled in favor of the plaintiff and has ordered the defendant to pay her $3,410. On behalf of all the redheads, I just have to say, don't we are what we are. Get a life. Okay. I can see that I'm you in don't medical have school, one, and you're hitting people and running. I think I have a life. Car up on up. Like you, you have the same car mm -hmm. with front end damage, right? My car is double. Did you have insurance? Damage. Did I have insurance at the time? No, I didn't. No insurance. Did you have a license? It was expired. Oh. You know, those are the kind of things that make people flee the scene of a rear end collision. Megan Hennessy is suing Shantae Maxwell for $3,326 for car damages and pain and suffering resulting from a hit and run car accident. With her in court is her husband and witness, Michael Hennessy. Shantae denies hitting Megan's car and says her car was damaged in a previous accident. She says this is just a case of mistaken identity. This court is now in session. Honorable Judge Alex Ferrer presiding. Thank you. Please be seated. Ms. Hennessy, you're suing Ms. Maxwell because you say you were involved in a hit and run collision where she rear-ended your, rear your vehicle and then fled the scene and refused to pay for your damages. Is that right? That's true, Your Honor. Okay. And Ms. Maxwell, you say she's absolutely incorrect. You had no collision with her and it's just mistaken identity. That's true, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Ms. Hennessy, tell me what happened here. So on the morning of August 26th of 09, I was driving to school around 8 in the morning. I was getting on the freeway at a metered stop. And I happened to look behind me as I was adjusting the mirror, and I saw Ms. Maxwell having quite a fit in the car, uh, flailing her arms. And that was the first time I noticed her was on the metered on-ramp. It was she, unusual. Was she alone in the car? No, there was a young man sitting with her. OK, so she was having a heated discussion, yeah. it looked like? Okay. At minimum, an argument. I'm not sure, but okay. something wild. What, where is this? What city? What state? This is um, Torrance, Gardena border in California, California. Mm -hmm. okay all right and you were where on, on what expressway I was getting on the 405 South freeway okay and so uh, she was behind you yes. what happened about half a mile later she re she rear ends me and so I thought hm. how, how did the rear ending happen so there are only two lanes that get on the 110 freeway which is where I immediately transition when I get on the 405 I don't really stay on that freeway so I had to be in the second lane over she apparently also had to be there and just came up when traffic came to a, a halt she did not and just proceeded to hit me from behind okay like so what, what, what kind of car was she in it was a few years old Mercedes-Benz okay. well, you drive a Mercedes-Benz Ms. Maxwell excuse me were you do, do you drive a Mercedes-Benz yes I, I did I did own a Mercedes-Benz yes you did okay what color pewter Pewter. Yes. That's right. Because Mercedes would not call it yeah, gold. Exactly. They call uh, it pewter. Pewter. Silver, gold. Okay. Um, all right. So, so how big was the damage to your car? 
Uh, out of pocket, my deductible was 500, but the actual total was around 2,300. Do you, do you have any pictures of the damage? Paid. I do. Let me let me see what you have. So let me see what your what your. Uh... That's actually everything. So, the the damage is actually worse than the exterior because it went up under my trunk. Let's put the pictures up, so I can take a look. Okay, so this is the exterior without the with the bumper on it. Yes. Okay, next picture. So it's kind of hard to tell in here. There's some pictures looking down into the trunk where the trunk is actually crumpled up into itself. Inside. Yes. So one of your other pictures here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I can see inside where your trunk is crumpled up yes. around the yeah. tire. Okay. So this would mean that her car would have to have hood damage. In Absolutely. All, in all likelihood, because it scooped under. Yes. All right? Okay. So tell me what happens after the accident, because I normally would go to Miss Maxwell and find out what happened, but she's denying that it was her. So sure. it's going to be kind of it's going to be kind of moot. I go like, why didn't you break? Okay. Very well. It wasn't me. So so what happens after the accident? So uh, everyone saw it because traffic has stopped, so you can't exactly drive away at that moment. You got to pretend like you're pulling over. Apparently, so we pull over, and she never got out of the car. So that made me think, hmm, this is unusual. So her boyfriend or whoever the young man was came out and spoke with me, and you know I asked if their baby was okay. You had a baby no, in the car. There was a baby. Okay. It was a toddler, and at no point did he ask if a I was child. okay. I'm sorry. A young child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and so what happened with your conversation? Do you, by the way, do you have a young child? Yes, I do have a son. You do? Yes. And a boyfriend? No. Did you have a boyfriend then? When she's... Uh, when she's saying... No, I did not. <laughs> okay. So, so go ahead. What happens? So um, I said, you know, is the baby okay? Do you have insurance? He said, yes, we do. So I said, great, so do I. So I turned around mm -hmm. to get my insurance, and he was getting his insurance as well. I turn around, and they're pulling away like, see you later, ma'am. So uh, I got the license as they drove away, and I typed it into my BlackBerry. I was very upset. My hands were shaking. You know, I was like, how, how is this happening to me kind of situation. <laughs> and so oh I typed the last three digits, 345 instead of 435, so they weren't able to find them. Okay, so you, you, you eventually call the police, and you say, I've just been a victim of a hit and run. Yes. And you call them, and you report it, and you give them the tag number that you entered into your BlackBerry. Yes. Or whatever, right? Okay. Yes. None of this has anything to do with you? No. No, okay. So they, uh, they run the tag, and since you've given them the inverted numbers, you say, 345 instead of 435? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you give them 345, and they run it, and I'm assuming it comes to a compo completely different car, not a Mercedes. Yeah. True. Okay. So normally that's the end of it. Normally, but you're dealing with a redhead, Your Honor, and I don't give up, so I decided that Good to she know. lives nearby. I'll probably see her again. Coming up, this hit and run turns into a high speed chase. I switch lanes, they switch lanes. I speed up, they speed up. I don't even know who it was. Like, I'm like, okay, this is getting really weird now. So I'm exiting the freeway because my friend lives close. And I'm calling her at the same time. Like, I think there's somebody following me. And later, will Shantae's alibi help save her case? Now, here's the remarkable thing. She does have a rear-end collision with some guy at a Burger King.